The Latte Panda is one of the very few x86 based SBCs on the market. Is it too hot to handle? Find out in this review. Okay. Uh, can I have a ski double shot espresso compound and uh, a hammerhead? Alright, cool. Take a seat. Thank you. Okay, here's your order. One latte vendor and a hammerhead. I ordered a skinny double shot espresso con panna. Oh, sorry, we're fresh out of panna and I only have the latte panna with the con. Oh man, it's hot. What's the hammer for? For fixing it, of course. Oh, it's not bad, is it? Ah. So I ordered my latte panda from DF Robot, which came acceptably packaged. I also picked up some copper heat sinks and an acrylic case. Apparently, the latte panda is a Windows 10 computer for everything. Inside the box is the expected SBC and also a small aerial for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And there we have it. Oh man, why do I always get everything upside down? I ordered the 2 gig RAM version, which is actually a 32-bit board. The 4 gig RAM version is a 64-bit board. Note this when you are ordering as it's not really clear enough on their website. They look identical except for the laser engraving on the metal cover. So what do we have on this SBC? Starting from the top right, working clockwise. 100 megabit Ethernet, audio out jack, micro SD slot, USB power, 6 Grove ports, LCD display, touch sensor connector, HDMI out, USB 3 or ATG, 2 USB 2.0 ports, Arduino reset button, CPU GPIO header, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chipset, and an external aerial connector, Arduino GPIO, power button, reset button, and underneath the metal bit is the quad-core Atom CPU. This is slightly different to other x86 SBCs in that they also use a plain old Atmel chip to perform all the GPIO work. At this point I could see three problems. I was disappointed to see no way for the Arduino to be able to power on or off the main CPU. And why the heck isn't there any 3.3 volt power supply? It limits your choices when all you have is 5 volts available. For some, the non-standard Arduino GPIO layout might be annoying. On the back side we have, well, not anything interesting except for the oddly placed power LED and the Atmega 32U4. How big is the Latte Panda? If you compare it to a handful of other SBCs, it's around the top end, but still small enough. The only commercial case for the Latte Panda is a laser cut acrylic case. This is frankly a real bugger to put together. I don't mind a bit of Lego style building at all, but when I want to just power it up and get stuck into testing, the last thing I want to do is figure out why number 20 doesn't fit into number 34. Anyway, I have a separate video on how to put your case together. Also, acrylic is a fairly fragile material, and things will break if you're not careful. I would look at 3D printing your own case. Once you have your case built, chuck in the usual HDMI, Ethernet, keyboard and mouse, and lastly power. A flashing blue LED is used by the Arduino, but the Lato Panda will not, by default, power up when you attach power. You can fix this by downloading and updating the firmware. Once powered on, it'll boot into the pre-installed Windows 10 fairly quickly. I was able to connect to my Wi-Fi access point without issue, and of course, local Ethernet worked straight up. Further Wi-Fi and Bluetooth testing will be in part 2 of this video. Of course, the SD is accessible as well, but I didn't really test any booting from the SD card. One nice thing is that they have pre-installed the Arduino IDE for you. So let's check that out. Oh, I need 1.06. Okay, should still work. I assumed that everything would be set up and so went straight into the Arduino blink example which should blink the small blue LED. Hmm, make sure you set the board type to Arduino Leonardo. This old version doesn't really help me much, so I assumed that the Atmega COM port should be COM3. And yep, worked well. See, blinky blue LED. So how does it go using the latest version, 1.612 as of this test? Download, install, blindly accept any dialog box that pops up, and there you have it. As you can see, the more recent version gives you more information on which COM port the Atmega is on. And yep, that works as well. Another problem I faced was with the Arduino Leonardo. 
If you've ever used a Leonardo, then you'll be familiar with having to wait for the cereal to be available before you can use it. If you don't do this on the Latte Panda, then you'll often see it either vanish from your OS or just lock up completely. And no, pressing the Arduino reset button doesn't help either. The only thing for it is to reboot the Latte Panda. Next on to some graphics testing. I use the same SPI based LCD touchscreen as in all my other videos. The really slow result was to be expected, but it worked without issue. For the I2C testing I wired up a simple temperature sensor, which worked without issue as well. Latte Panda is very focused on the Windows environment and all their documentation is very centered around that. Lito Panda documentation is, well, it's there, but if you are a novice and haven't worked with Visual Studio or Azure before, then there will be a steep learning curve. I would have expected there to be a complete install of everything to get you started quickly, but no. For those interested, I ran YouTube and Google Earth to see how the desktop went. YouTube was fine, but there's no HDMI audio out, and so you have to use the analog jack. Google Earth was snappy and responsive, so no issues there. Moving on to some objective graphics tests, I fired up GFX Bench. At 1024 by 600 resolution, the graphics was pretty smooth for most of the tests, giving us a max of 34 frames per second on the T-Rex demo, and down to 9 frames per second on the car chase. At full HD, it dropped down to 14 frames per second on the T-Rex, and almost 4 for the car chase. So my take on it is that it will perform fairly well for most games. However, make sure you chuck some heat sinks on with some active cooling. Every part of the board gets really hot. Running Geekbench version 4 came up with some great CPU benchmark results. Not flash, but fairly decent for the price point. However, the graphics benchmark always just hung and never worked. So I gave up on that. So enough of Windows. Let's see if I can get Linux to run on this little baby. Head over to your nearest Debian mirror and download the multi-architecture ISO image. This will work on either the 32 or 64 bit versions of the Lato Panda. I installed Debian onto a USB flash drive to avoid overwriting windows on the onboard eMMC storage. I also loaded up the ISO image onto a second USB flash drive. When you power up, you'll be greeted by the Debian install screen. You can select either basic or expert install. If you select basic, then there's one more step you'll need to do afterwards. You can see I selected the 32 gig USB flash drive for Debian. Using a USB flash drive turned out to be a bit of a mistake. If you chose expert install, then make sure you answer yes to this removable media path question. Otherwise, you won't be able to boot automatically. If you chose the basic install method, then once finished, you'll have to reboot into rescue mode. Select the boot disk, select this option, and then apply. Another problem was that for some strange reason I couldn't automatically boot from the USB 3 port, only the USB 2.0 ports. As it turns out, if you're booting from a USB flash drive, make sure it's a decent one. If it's a slow device like mine, then you will experience lockups or slowdowns on Ethernet. The Latte Panda uses a chipset that provides both USB 2.0 and Ethernet. It's the same chipset used on the chip and Odroid XU4. So I used a USB hard drive instead attached it to the USB 3 port and reinstalled the OS. Once Debian was installed, I upgraded the old 3.6 kernel to 4.8 and rebooted. Incidentally, if you are having trouble booting, you can always manually boot the UEFI device from the BIOS. Press the escape key on your keyboard just after the power on to get into the BIOS and select the device to boot under boot override. Next on to testing Arduino under Linux. You can either use the Arduino IDE version in the Debian repository, which is old, or you can download the latest version from the Arduino website. I used the basic Blink sketch, of course making sure I set the correct board type and serial port. And there you go, it works. One of the real buggers with this board is the lack of drivers available under Linux. As of this review, there's no I2C or audio drivers available. Remember there are several GPIOs coming out of the Atom CPU. You won't be able to use them for now until someone writes a driver for it. Graphics desktop performance was a little choppy using MPV and mPlayer, which improved greatly with copious amounts of active cooling without proper heatsinks. I downloaded the Ferronix test suite version 6.6 .6 and ran it over a couple of days. Check on the openbenchmarking.org website once I've uploaded the results. With no native drivers under Linux, the graphics benchmarks weren't so crash hot. And speaking of heat, 
They ran all these tests on a non-cooled Lato Panda to give you an idea of just how much throttling you experience due to overheating. Some results were better than others, depending how much load all CPUs were under at the time. Part 2 of this review will look at repeating these tests with proper active cooling to see the difference. So what do I think of the Lato Panda? Well at this stage I'd give this SBC a rating of 3.5 out of 5. Support is there and it's you know, sort of ok. There were some very odd design decisions like not being able to control the power to the main CPU from the Mega. No 3.3 volt power rail and the overheading problem which throttles the CPU. If you enjoyed this video then don't forget to hit like and you can follow or subscribe to me on any of the social networks. A big thanks to all my Patreons for supporting me. By doing so, they help me help you. Thanks for watching, and see you next week.